and welcome to the second video of chapter 17. Uh, with this we are going to learn how to balance redox reactions. This is not as simple as balancing uh, other chemical reactions. It is a long and involved process. Uh, in fact, it's an eight or nine step process, depending on what particulars are involved. Uh, we will go through this, we'll practice uh, with a, uh, uh, the reaction between hydrogen peroxide and uh, permanganate. And then I'll show you uh, a few more examples. This is going to take us quite some time. Now, the first step here is identifying which species is oxidized and which species is reduced. Now, there's no, no new skills here. It's just a matter of uh, identifying the oxidation numbers and all the stuff that uh, you get shown, and then finding out which one goes up, which one goes down. If the oxidation number goes up, that means that the species was oxidized. Uh, if the oxidation number goes down, that means that it was reduced. So you're comparing reactants to products here. So here is, <coughs> excuse me, here's our unbalanced reaction. And the first thing you'll notice is that it, it's unbalanceable by normal means. That's intentional. Um, this is a different class of reaction. You have to treat it a different way. And the first thing we have to do is identify the oxidation numbers of everything uh, involved. So just working our way from left to right, uh, hydrogen is plus one. That's nice and simple. Uh, oxygen, um, be careful, this is a peroxide. So that means that the oxidation number on oxygen is going to be minus one. So plus one and minus one. Now, coming over here, we have permanganate, MnO4 1 minus. Um, I'm going to show you a way to do this that saves a little bit of space. Now, uh, we know what oxygen is, so we'll go ahead and deal with that first. Okay, it's going to be negative 2. And there are four of them, which gives us a total of negative 8 coming from the oxygen. And then all we have to do is figure out what manganese is. So we plug that negative 8 into the algebra formula. Uh, manganese plus negative 8 equals the total charge in the compound, negative 1. And then you just solve for uh, 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 manganese. The, and that gives us manganese equals positive 7. So that is the important one of that species. Uh, oxygen gets involved in a lot of what are known as oxoanions, and then it usually just flies in and out of water. Uh, the, the important thing in the oxoanion is usually, not always, but usually, uh, the thing bound to oxygen. So what we need to focus on here is the manganese, uh, especially since manganese is what's showing up on the right-hand side. And speaking of, let's go over and look at the oxidation numbers on our product species. And coming over to the product side, these are nice and simple. We have elemental oxygen and monatomic manganese. So the oxidation number on oxygen is just zero, and the uh, oxidation number on this manganese over here is just two plus. Nice and simple. So now, in order to find out uh, which are oxidized and if which are reduced, that's what we're trying to find here, we just compare the oxidation numbers of our reactants to our products. And coming from uh, left to right, we have oxygen going from negative 1 to 0. It's going up, so it's oxidized. And manganese is going from positive 7 to positive 2. It's going down, so it's reduced. And there we have our, uh, our two uh, uh, species, our oxidized and our reduced species. It's the oxygen of peroxide and the manganese of the permanganate. Um, why not the oxygen in permanganate? Well, like I said, uh, for those oxoanions, we're usually focusing on the thing that's not oxygen. And in this case, it's just because I have to tell you. In other examples, it uh, well, won't necessarily be simpler or easier, but it might be uh, less heinous. Okay, so let's move on to the next step in balancing redox reactions. Now the next step, after you have identified the reduced and oxidized species, 
is to split your reaction into half reactions. Um, your reduction half reaction and your oxidation half reaction. This just means you do this. You have your reduction half reaction, that's in blue up top. Um, in this case, that's permanganate going to manganese 2 plus. That's just the species being reduced. And down bottom in green, you have peroxide making oxygen. Uh, that's your oxidation half reaction. Now, even though technically these two things uh, don't exist in isolation, you can't really have half a reaction, you can think of it sort of like a reaction mechanism. You know, you're only temporarily in sort of for pretend splitting it up into half reactions. Um, hopefully, as we uh, move forward, you'll see a bit more about why we do that. And let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, step three is you balance everything except hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, hydrogen and oxygen will be balanced later. Now, I'm going to stress it now, and I'm going to keep on stressing it. You have to do this for both half reactions, each half reaction. You do it separately for the two half reactions. Uh, you're not balancing between the two half reactions. Each one gets treated separately and independently okay, until near the end. All right, and when we look at our, uh, our two half reactions, well, uh, the top one, the, we have manganese and oxygen. So we go ahead and balance the manganese, and that's really, really easy. There's one manganese on the left, there's one manganese on the right. We don't need to do anything to that. I'm going to go ahead and put the one in there just to help keep track of it. Uh, down bottom, we have hydrogen and oxygen on the left, oxygen on the right. There's nothing to balance in this step. We're balancing everything but hydrogen and oxygen. All we have is hydrogen and oxygen, so we'll ignore that for now. Uh, that, that this reaction is a little unusual in that respect, but uh, not terribly so. Uh, hydrogen and oxygen show up all the time in these things, so you'll, you'll get used to seeing them and putting them on hold like this. And that said, we go ahead and we move on to our next step. And in this step, we balance oxygen, just oxygen, by adding water. Um, yes, this will be throwing more hydrogen in there. That's just fine. That's not a problem. Okay, all these, all these reactions are taking place in water, so water is in high supply, large supply, plentiful supply. Uh, we'll have plenty of that floating around, so we'll never have to worry about having uh, hydrogen or oxygen available. So we uh, add water. Let's add, let's look at our two half reactions and our reduction half reaction. We have four oxygen on the reactant side. We have zero oxygen on the product side. So we are going to add water to the product side. We need four, so we have four water. Uh, now we look at our oxidation half reaction. That is uh, H2O2 and O2. We have two oxygen and two oxygen. We are not lacking oxygen anywhere. So we don't need to add any water to that. So we don't do anything to our oxidation half reaction. Um, that doesn't necessarily happen all the time. It's not necessarily uncommon. It's just sort of the way things work out sometimes. We haven't had to do anything to this half reaction so far. So let's move on to the next step. All right, in this step, we balance out the hydrogen by adding H plus, just H plus. So you identify the side of the reaction that lacks uh, hydrogen, and you add H plus to that side. So coming back to our reaction, we look at our reduction half reaction. We have no hydrogen on the reactant side, and we have water on the right. Uh, so four times two makes eight hydrogen. So that means we need to add eight H plus to the reactant side. And coming down to our oxidation half reaction, yes, we are finally going to mess with this reaction. Uh, we have two hydrogen on the left, we have zero hydrogen on the right. So we are going to add two H plus to the product side of the oxidation half reaction. Uh, so we've finally balanced out all the elements, but we are not done. There's still more steps to go. We're on step five out of eight or nine. So let's keep going. And in step six, we balance charge by adding electrons. 
Just as there is conservation of matter and conservation of energy, there's also the principle of the conservation of charge. So charge always has to be balanced out. Uh, a special note, you are not bringing charges to zero. You are bringing charges to equality. Okay? You're just making the reactant and product sides equal, not zero. Okay? So looking at our uh, two half reactions again, up top we have a reduction half reaction. We have manganese, uh, uh, the permanganate adding a negative charge and the uh, hydrogen adding a positive charge on the products or reactant side, and we have manganese adding a positive charge on the product side. So on the left, it's one minus plus eight plus. I, I've written it up top. It's kind of squeezed in there. Um, one minus plus eight plus equals seven plus on the reactant side. And we have two plus plus zero on the product side. So that's just plus two. So you need to make them equal. You can only do that by adding electrons. Electrons have a negative charge, so we are bringing the 7 plus down to 2 plus. So we add 5 electrons on the reactant side uh, of this equation. And that brings them both down to positive 2, not 0. Now coming down to our oxidation half reaction, uh, they both need to be, in this case, zero. It's zero on the left, and it's positive two on the right because of those two H pluses. So we bring the uh, product side down to zero. Okay. And we bring it down to zero, not because it's zero, but because that's what the reactant side is. I okay, just want to stress that. Uh, now here is a place where you can double check things. Okay. Uh, Reduction means gaining electrons. Oxidation means losing electrons. So your reduction half reaction should always have electrons on the reactant side. Your oxidation half reaction should always have electrons on the product side. So that is a, a spot where you can double check. So that said, let's go ahead and move on to step seven. All right, so. Now that we've balanced the charges, we balance the two half reactions against each other. We're getting ready to uh, add them back together. Now the thing is, uh, although all reactions involve electrons and redox reactions focus on electrons, electrons have to be invisible. We don't want them to be apparent. We don't want them showing up in their chemical reaction. So we balance the two half reactions against each other by making sure that they have equal numbers of electrons. This also goes back to conservation of matter and conservation of charge. However many electrons the uh, oxidized species loses have to be taken by the reduced species. So we're just balancing the reactions. So now we look at our two half reactions. We have five electrons up top in the reduction half reaction. We have two electrons down the bottom in the oxidation half reaction. A quick way to go ahead and balance these is just to multiply the two reactions by the opposite numbers. So we multiply our reduction half reaction by two, because there are two electrons in the oxidation half reaction. And we multiply our oxidation half reaction by five because reduction has five. Okay. So up top, it gets us, we're multiplying everything by two. This gets us two permanganate plus 16 hydrogen plus 10 electrons yields two manganese plus eight water. And down bottom, we have five hydrogen peroxide yields five oxygen plus 10 hydrogen plus 10 electrons. All right, so now I am gonna go ahead and tidy this up a bit. You won't have that option on tests and so on, so don't get used to it, but I'm doing it because I have a limited workspace. And now that I've done that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next step, possibly the final step, depending on uh, the circumstances. Right, in step eight, we add our half reactions together, which means we cancel anything that appears on both the reactant and product sides of those arrows. Okay. Uh, water and hydrogen, often, not always, but often appear on both sides. 
electrons always do. You often, not always, have water and hydrogen left over. You will never ever have electrons left over. So we look at our two half reactions and we see that we have hydrogen on the left up top and it's on the right down in the bottom. And of course we have electrons on the left up top and down bottom there on the right. Now because we did this correctly, our electrons will cancel out perfectly. 10 and 10, nothing left over. The same is not true of our hydrogen. Uh, we have 10 hydrogen on the right, we have 16 hydrogen on the left. So when you cancel those out, you'll have zero on the right and six on the left. So you're gonna have some hydrogen left over, is what I'm saying. And with that done, you can now add your two reactions together to get the final uh, balanced reaction. And this is what we see when we add them together. 2 MnO4 minus plus 5 H2O2 plus 6 H plus yields 2 Mn2 plus plus 5 O2 plus 8 H2O. Now, one of the weaknesses of the method I showed you before for balancing the electrons is that your reaction might be um, too big. <laughs> your coefficients might not be fully reduced. Okay? You need to get rid of any common factors they might have. Okay, so if they were all divisible by 2, you need to divide by 2. If they're all divisible by 3, you need to divide by 3. So double check here is what I'm saying. In this case, 256, 258, there's no common factors, nothing to divide by but there could be. So let's clean this up, move it up to the top. Um, this is a good spot to stop and double check because a lot of the time you'll be done at this point. So go ahead and double check. What you need to check are the elements and the charges. Make sure that those all balance out. Okay? Make sure that they show up in equal numbers on both sides. So our elements are manganese, hydrogen, and oxygen. For manganese, we have 2 times 1 equals 2 on the left, and 2 times 1 equals 2 on the right. Boom, those balance. For hydrogen, it's a little more complicated. We have 5 times 2 is 10, 6 times 1 is 6, 10 plus 6 is 16 on the left, and on the right, it's 8 times 2 over here on water. 8 times 2 is 16 hydrogens on the right. Those balance. Uh, oxygen is also complicated. Uh, on the left, 5 times 2 is 10, and 2 times 4 is 8. Ooh, I, I almost screwed myself up. We have, uh, four time, we have 4 oxygens in each permanganate, so 2 times 4 is 8, and uh, 5 times 2 in the peroxide is 10 for a total of 18. And on the right, uh, we have 5 times 2 oxygens gets us 10, 8 times 1 in water is 8, so we have 18 oxygens on the right. So those balance as well, and our elements are all balanced. But we're not done. We also need to double check the charges. Okay, so I represent those with a Q. This Q can represent charge. It can also represent heat. Sorry for the confusion. That's just the way things are. All right, so on the left, we have uh, a negative sign above permanganate, and there are two of those. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. We have 6 hydrogens. So 6 times 1 plus is positive 6. So positive 6 and negative 2 gets us a total of positive 4 on the left. And on the right, the only charge is coming from the manganese. Uh, 2 times 2 plus gets us a total of 4 plus. So we have positive 4 on the left, positive 4 on the right. So the charges balance as well. So everything is balanced. This is the fully balanced redox reaction between permanganate and peroxide in an acidic solution. So if we're talking about an acidic battery, we stop here. But we might not be. So let's go ahead and move on to step nine. And in step nine, we just alter the formula slightly. So sometimes uh, redox reactions take place in acidic solutions, sometimes they take place in basic solutions. It has to be one or the other. It's not, it's not going to be neutral. Um, if it's in a basic solution, 
you're going to need to get rid of any H+, which means just adding hydroxide to either side. It's, it's really easy to do. Okay, so here is our uh, balanced uh, uh, redox reaction. We have, here's the problem, 6H plus on the reactant side. You don't get H plus swimming around in a basic solution. So we add hydroxide, enough to cancel it out, to both sides. Okay? Remember, uh, conservation of matter, conservation of charge, we add 6 hydroxide to either side, to both sides, to each side. Uh, H plus plus OH minus is water, so you're going to get six water on the reactant side. And now, just like way back, you know, two hours ago, uh, if something appears on both sides of the reaction, it cancels out. So our six waters cancel out entirely, and our eight waters get reduced down to two. So now let's go ahead and clean this up. And what that gets us is 2 permanganate plus 5 hydrogen peroxide yields 2 manganese 2 plus 5 oxygen plus 2 water plus 6 hydroxides. And this is another possible correct answer. Okay? The earlier correct answer was in an acidic battery. This one is in a basic battery. So those are the two possibilities. So when I give you a, uh, uh, a redox reaction problem, check it for acid or base. Okay? That will let you know uh, if it's in a uh, acidic solution or a basic solution. That'll let you know if it's eight steps or nine steps. Now, I don't know about you, but I am kind of tired of this particular video. It's gone a bit longer than I normally like. I just wanted to get this one reaction done. When we come back, I'll walk through uh, another uh, uh, example of a redox reaction in an acidic solution and a different one in a basic solution.